Aloha and boy howdy. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Show. We are here with two cowboys from Oklahoma. Adam Minahan and David Niles are going to join us from the Catholic Man Show. Uh, and we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Boy, howdy, we got some cowboys with us here today from Oklahoma. Hey, do you, do you guys, either of you guys wear boots? Have boots? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. We got Adam Minahan, David Niles from the Catholic Man Show. Uh, do you, uh, do you wear, is it, what's your, is it, is it what you d- wear daily? No. Just I don't the, wear them daily. No, but I, I have gotten to the point where I now wear them with a suit. Oh, yeah. Boots and suits is yeah. totally a thing in Oklahoma. And 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 when you ri- and when you're at, when you're riding bulls, yeah, naturally, yeah, right. <laughs> hey, these two, these two young, obviously. yeah, obviously. You know, my wife was a ro- barrel racer. No kidding, she's yeah. gnarly. Oh, awesome. Yeah, she was from uh, middle of Florida, someplace, and she, and she um, never wore anything but cowboy boots until she had to wear uh, tennis shoes to try out for cheerleader in high school. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she knows all about that. Yeah. So, and I always picture, um, you know, Father Mitch Pack was always with his boots, you know. So, you know, my new book that's going to come out that I'm working on right now is called Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? The 24 Rules, oh, really? of, Man- 24 nice. rules of Manliness. Yeah. So, yeah. So we going back to that cowboy um, virtue. But speaking of virtue, we have two very unvirtuous guys here. Um, we know that because uh, we, we see them on the, we hear them on the Catholic Man Show coming out of Oklahoma. And one of the things that they do every every show is I think you guys start your show off with reviewing a manly beverage, only on Catholic radio, right? We, yeah, we, could, that's could, right. You guys, could you guys do that for us before we get sure. rolling? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we've got one right here. We have one right here. Yeah, it's a Glendalach single malt seven Glen, year. Glendalach. Glendalach. You have to yeah. say it right. Yes, uh, it's an Irish whiskey, uh, and in fact, it's really cool. Bear, it has on the label. It has a picture of Saint Kevin. Now, do you know anything about Saint Kevin from uh, Ireland? I thought he was like uh, in modern day lingo, like a, a man version of the, of a Karen. You know, <laughs> someone that can play it all the time. You know what? I think that there were probably some people at his time who thought that uh, he was very austere. You know, and austere saints often were not received very favorably. Uh huh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so he was St. Kevin of Glendalock. I think it's funny because when I think of saints from a long time ago, I don't think of them being named Kevin. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, right, his, best right friend, no. his best friend is Buffy and Chadwick, right? I mean, right, yeah, exactly. So you mean St. Bob from the fourth century? Like, yeah. What? <laughs> saints. Yeah, yeah. But, he, but he, he's depicted with his hands out and a, and a, uh, a bird on his hand. And it, it's because he's, he stood so long. Um, in penance with his mm. hands out in the form of crucifix that uh, the, the legend has it that a bird uh, landed on his hand and made a nest and then he didn't want to uh, drop the the nest and so he kept it there the whole time so anyway that's that's the label it's as, pretty cool he must have had, had too much really whiskey before he must have too much whiskey before he did that so so how is the no whiskey pre-gaming. how how is it it's very good yeah uh, the, Gl- Glendalock is like is one I didn't really I wasn't very familiar with until we reviewed it and mm-hmm. since then I've had a couple of their couple of whiskeys from Glendalock Distillery in Ireland. Well, they're, cool all really they're all how really cool good. They're all really good. How cool is that? It's yeah. so I went you know I went to Ireland a few years ago uh, scouting things out for our TV show. Thought we might film there, and I was so sick. I had I put a hotel right between the Guinness, a brewery, and the uh, Jameson's Distillery. And I didn't go to either. I was like situated where I could just walk to either either one of them. And I was <laughs> you didn't go either. So under the weather that I really couldn't do that. But you guys start your uh, show off with a, what what else do you say? Make it more official. What else do you say about your, your uh, manly beverage? Oh yeah, so uh, we always we always give a cheers. That's typical, like you know, as a as a as a Catholic man, cheers you should, to Jesus. You should you should cheers. And so like at the very beginning of our show, when like six years ago, whenever we started, we said, well, who should we cheers to? And we couldn't think of anybody better 
than Jesus to cheers to. So we say we're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. Cheers to Jesus. Hey, man, that sounds Thank good. Cheers. All I have here is water, but I will join you. But and Barry, I, you mentioned going to Ireland. We're mm. going to Ireland. Adam and I are going to Ireland in September. We're leading our first ever pilgrimage. I want to go. Yeah. I, I want to be a you big part come. of your pilgrimage. You need to come. You need to come. Let's go. September. Go to CatholicMantra.com uh, and sign up. Who's driving? That's the, the those roads are so narrow and there's <laughs> rock walls on either side and you know. Well, we have we have a we have we have a driver got, for us, so we don't have to worry a, about it. An Irish local who will be handling the driving. And I think the right side is suicide, right? You got to you got to ro- surf on, you got to ride on the wrong side of the road and all that. Oh, I, I yep. wish I, I I did travel to the to the to the, I guess they call it the wild um, side of the island. What do they call it? The wild the Atlantic. The cliffs of Moore. Yeah, to the cliffs oh, okay. of Moore and all those areas. Uh-huh. And it's just yeah. so, and you know, it's the land of scholars and saints, right? Right. Yeah. And good absolutely. whiskey. So, and good whiskey. And, and so, yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to it. It's our first one. I see a humidor behind you. Uh, do you guys ever review cigars too on your show or no? We have before. Yeah. yeah. So we actually have a, a, a local Catholic guy who, who hand rolls his own cigar, er, cigars and it's Ultimo cigars. Yeah. He's one of only three guys in the country who make their own, like, have their own cigar factory he calls it a factory it's really him and two guys who sit there and roll cigars all day so if you go into a cigar shop mm-hmm. everything only in, in there, oklahoma he made only it himself yeah, yeah it, and the cigars are just awesome we so we've reviewed some of his cigars before but when we when we were right doing long ride home we were down in miami with archbishop wensky and we went to the the little havana to the a cigar factory there they i don't know what i forget what it was called but there was a the whole the, the whole place was a humidor you know you walked in and you were in a humidor Mm -hmm. it was huge and they had people hand rolling the cigars you know and 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 then i have peter bond who makes my my line of cigars we have the the seven virtue cigar sampler i think you guys might have sampled a few of those Uh and those are those are great cigars aren't they and they're based on the seven virtues yes yes i think you're right yeah he's also makes thousands of of holy cards Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, shout out to Regina him. cigars. Regina yeah. cigars. Oh, that's Regina. right. That's what it is. Regina. Yeah. I knew. Yeah. I knew it was. But ma- I think a it's a, there's an Ave Maria uh, connection there too, though I believe. And so yeah, he's an awesome guy, and he made. He, he had. I had to tra- sample all these cigars, and we chose these seven, three, three um, of the milder blend, and then uh, I'm see three Maduros and four of the milder blend for the theological and the cardinal virtues. And then when nice. you when you smoke it, you have to take off the label because it's too long to smoke it. And when you peel it off, then there's a quote from my, one of my books on, on that virtue. But we're, we're just so glad to be with you guys. I mean, I've met a lot of people over the last 10, 10 12 years. And you guys always just, boom, just jump jump out at me as being guys that really sold out to the Lord and have a real, um, you, you know, the thing about you guys, you're being very real in your ministry. So t- can you tell us a little bit about, just a little bit of remind people about your background. I know you guys were roommates and, and then how this whole Catholic Man Show got started and how people can participate. Yeah, sure. So we, Adam and I have been best friends since kindergarten. Um, we went to high school together. We, we grew up in the same neighborhood together. And uh, after college, we moved in together. We both kind of, we both followed a very similar arc in our uh, faith life where in college, I think like a lot of people, it's not that we rejected the faith. We just stopped practicing. You know, I, for me, I, I was apathetic. It's like, yeah, religion, you know, church. I'll get back to that when I'm old, right? And um, I don't know if I'm old yet, but praise God, I did come back to it. Um, so I'm, I'm glad I did, in fact, do that. But it was through Catholic Radio that really, that was the thing that really lit the spark for us, that uh, one day one of us came up to the other and said, hey, I have this crazy idea, just throwing it out there. What if this Sunday we went to Mass? And the other mm-hmm. one was like, oh, that is a crazy <laughs> idea. <laughs> Um, and so it was our friendship really helped solidify and validate that, you know, those good choices. Friendships, that's what they do. I mean, they'll, they'll validate good choices or bad choices. That's why it's important mm. to have good friends in your life. Because without him, without uh, Adam doing it with me, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what, what would have happened. Would I have, you know, gone back for two or three weeks and then it just been a phase like, oh, I went through that church phase, you know, where I I tried going back to mass, you know, but the fact that we did it together was so much more powerful. Yeah. And this, then after that, you know, so yeah, 
So friendship it prepares us in the, the friendship in this life prepares us for friendship with Christ in the next, right? So as we continue to grow in our friendship and in this life, yeah, yeah. and in this life, yeah. as we continue to grow in our friendships, uh, we continue to grow closer and closer to our Lord. Uh, we got married, and then we actually live across the street from each other now. So our children get to get a chance to be with each other, which is wonderful because mm. one of the best things you can give as a dad to your children is a good friendship for them. Having yeah, and, good and a good uncle them. across, you know, a good uncle too. And a good, and yeah. good old uncle, yeah. yeah. So then, Godfather uh, we probably just, too. <laughs> yep, you're right. In fact, it's my godson's birthday today downstairs. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. shout out to Luke. Adam, Adam's son, Luke. Yeah. And it, so, you know, we said that Catholic Radio pl- played this huge spark in, in our conversion. And one day we were minding our own business and we got this opportunity to start a Catholic radio station in Tulsa. Okay, so and, hold on, hold on. Okay. We got to take right. a break. You know all about that, and we'll hear about this adventure because there's so many great stories about Catholic Radio and how they get started. We listen to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Where can people find you guys? TheCatholicManshow.com. TheCatholicManshow.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daniel Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Bootstraps. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps kind of an odd scene if you know what i mean how is anyone supposed to pull on their bootstraps to get themselves up off the ground that just don't work of course it's one of them hyperboles that is exaggerating of the truth to make a point it means to get on with fixing your own bad situation by gutting it out and making do on your own well there are plenty of wimps that need to quit whining quit using others and learn to pull harder on their own bootstraps no doubt about that Seems to me more folks today need a stint in the Marine Corps or Peace Corps or a long season of long days on a fish tender. But even a hard-bitten cowboy knows, no matter how resourceful and tough he is, some things just can't be done without getting some help. Got a serious trigger puller army veteran friend who goes by Xavier. Old X is as busted up in more places in his body than ten other wounded warriors combined. X is as tough as they come. Yet, his pride doesn't get in his way to ask for help when he's needing it. Some things his body will just not let him do no longer. The Apostle Paul was as tough an old codger as they come. Went through boo tight spots more than any other man I've read about. Yet, he clearly recognized his need for the Lord's help many a time and asked for the same of others now and then. Suggest we all get toughened up like Paul, but not so much that we are foolish to think we can always get it done on our own. Meanwhile, grab your bootstraps and pull. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have two men with us today, David Miles and Adam Minahan from the Catholic Man Show, and they have their, uh, what is it called, the Council of Men? Or Council That's of Men? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah Council it, of Men. It, it, it's, it's still on Facebook. It's, it's a Facebook community. Mm-hmm. And yep, uh, for all, all of our supporters who, who support the Catholic Mansion. And it's a very vibrant community. You know, I'm a member of it. I, 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 yeah. I, I kind of watch it. You guys actually help, help inspire me for the kind of like the older, older guys, you know, for the, the, the man cave. It was you guys that kind of prompted me to do that. And now we have this three-year curriculum as part of our group of the, the three years curriculum on, on the School of Manliness. 
So it's pretty cool because fathers and sons. That is awesome. awesome. Yeah, fathers and sons will go through it together because it's like each month there's a certain thing we talk about, and then there's video and audio and written and and as the as the as the men go through it together, we go through the whole we go through the same virtue whatever together, um, and you click off the lessons as you go through it. Now the fathers are saying, I want my son to go through it with me. And so we don't let them come into the man cave. That's for adults only. But they get their own username and access. And the fathers will spend a couple times a week with their their sons, leading them through the through the uh, school of manliness, the adventure. But it was your guys' inspiration that uh, that you know caused me to do that uh, for for my ministry. So tell us about this. Tell us about the your, more about your ministry and the council of men or man. Man, yeah, council yeah, the of council man. of man. Yeah, what so a great name. Yeah, well, I also really like the man cave. That's also pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, pretty sweet. So well done. Um, so, yeah, the Council of Man, we just started that because we had people who were reaching out saying they wanted to support our show. They just loved what we were doing. You know, when Adam and I, uh, he mentioned on, before the break that we got all of a sudden we were minding our own business. And literally, we just ended up with a Catholic radio station. I mean, it was. <laughs> yes. It, it kind of is almost. That's not an exaggeration. We just got an email from this guy. That said, hey, I have this idea for a radio station. Call me tonight. See, so you have to call me tonight if we're going to make it work. And so I called him, and then like literally the next thing we knew, we had a radio station, and it was he gave it to us and for us to like. All right, um, so we have this radio station. We decided, well, we should start a show for men because you know there's uh, some really great programming for women. Um, a lot of like daytime radio is. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of geared more toward a female audience because they're the ones who are listening a lot of mm -hmm. times. Um, and so we wanted something for men. So it's like, well, it's a Catholic radio. It's a Catholic show for men. What should we call it? <laughs> <laughs> the Catholic Man Show. That's the best, that's the best show title I've ever It's a great heard. title. It really <laughs> is. It's so perfect. Yeah. And so we started it. It was just going to be for Tulsa, really. That was just our idea. We've got this station here in Tulsa. But we might as well throw it up as a podcast on the internet, and then people started listening, and we weren't—we were kind of surprised, but it just kind of took off. You guys are such a team. You're—you're you're a force together to have a cohort, a partner in crime like that, because you guys are always, you know, in your in your council of men, you're always posting, encouraging each other, and it takes. You know, people ask me, you know, I don't really have a men's group in my in my in my church. Well, that's your fault. Start one. Yeah, you get, start one. But but you have to get one other man to stand with you. Mm -hmm. That will really do it. In my ministry, it's yep. Pat Gervais. He he works so hard for me with my, with our tech side of and keeping our website and stuff. But if you have, if two men can do tremendous things, once I was I was uh, in Texas at a retreat, and I I was I had this buddy of mine, and we go, hey, let's see how how far you can run down this railroad track. And, and I'll run down the opposite one, you know, next to it, and we'll run and see who can last the longest. And, of course, we fell off right away. But at one point we were teetering and we locked arms. And we could run forever. You know, we balanced each other. We kept, you know. Ah. So there's something about uh, when Jesus sent people out by twos and the two of you guys together. I see it. I see the vibrance of your ministry. You, 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 you keep breathing life into it together. You know, when you, if you, think it would be like if it was just one of you doing it. It, it, would, be oh, it, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't happen. It, it wouldn't happen, yeah. Yeah, and your families uh, are are um, uh, you know a big part of this too. You know they. Oh yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that because our both of our wives they have to, I mean they have to be a partner with us in this. Mm -hmm. You know in the, in our ministry just because it takes time. You know it takes time to do it, mm -hmm. and when we travel or when we're doing the show, you know in, once a week or more, um, both of our wives are just so incredible. So. Yeah, let's give a shout out to our wives. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lady you guys, Pamela and Lady, Lady Haley. Okay, who's who, who's is who's? Pamela, my wife is is Pamela, and mine is Haley. And Lady Haley is that way she goes by? Yeah. <laughs> well, we we call we call our wives Lady Pamela and Lady Haley on the oh, show. Oh, that's so cool. You guys are so cool. I just love what love what you guys do. <laughs> but you know, in, in regards to that though, you guys have this gr this great book now that kind of a guide for fathers and how to be the leader in the domestic church and to bring and to bring um worship and that type of thing into the home can you tell us about that the book yeah what inspired I mean, it's it? a great segue it's a great segue because we wrote it with our wives yeah mm. and it's all about living the domestic church living out the domestic church as it's as it you know in its fullness um 
you know, making that this idea of liturgical living present in the home. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not just that. It's like, what should a holy home be? What is the end that we're striving for? Because liturgical living is certainly part of that. You know, we definitely want the liturgy to inform our home life. You know, if it's Lent, we want the home life to be different than if it's Easter or Christmas. Um, but that's not that's not the end. Um, mm. It's not the end theologically or philosophically or um, practically speaking. So it, we we wanted to cover more than that. Just the day to day things and what the home life should point us to. Yeah, so we, and we get different perspectives. We have a, a fatherhood chapter that Dave and I wrote. We have a motherhood chapter that our, that our, our, our wives wrote. And then we have the living, living liturgically and then like language in the domestic church. You know, so we have mm. this language that we have in, in church, in liturgy, right? So if, if, if the priest says, the Lord be with you, we all know to say, and with your spirit. And with your spirit. So what does the language of the church look like in the domestic church? Mm -hmm. And how does that help form and bring up holy habits in the church? So we have a whole chapter on that. We have a chapter on like how to uh, form your home to make it a holy, holy place, to have holy spots to be able to pray and to form your children in yeah. prayer. Talking about the actual rooms go, themselves. Yeah, let, let's back up a bit. I, I really want to go in a little bit more okay. depth. You talked about the, the, the type of liturgy you can experience you can have at home give us get us down it draw us into that and then let's talk about this next subject too i, I don't want to just bounce, bounce over that sure no no i think yeah. that's great you know the idea of liturgical living it's not a new idea but that the phrase liturgical living is is uh been coined over the last handful of years um and i think that's very helpful because um, i grew up in a very catholic home but that idea of bringing the liturgy into the home the seasonality of the liturgy and, and right. all of that yeah exactly like okay if it's the easter octave you bet we're having dessert every day right there, we're not we're not skipping cake during the octave of easter or christmas or or pentecost or whatever and like we're having we're gonna celebrate all the feast days and this is like where the joy of um the catholic life uh, it can is really very obvious it's so cool uh, because there's so many great things to celebrate all the time throughout the calendar. Another, here's like a very practical take home example. During Passion Tide, right before, right, you know, right before Good Friday, if you go to the church, you will see the crucifix, all the holy images covered in purple. Do that at home. Cover up your own crucifixes with a purple cloth. Um, you can go and get like some purple, I don't know what we have. It's not even really cloth, it's like a, it's something. But it was really cheap. It was so cheap. And you take scissors and you cut it to be the right size and you drape it over the image of Jesus and Mary, whatever you have in your home. Hopefully you have a lot of them. But that, especially for when you have young kids like Adam and I do, is, um, you know, it's a very visual, it's a very real thing that the home and the church are the same, right? That it's not just, oh, we go to church to live out the faith. No, mm. we live at the church in the home, just like in the church. We live at the faith in the home, just like at church, mm -hmm. right? And that there's no distinction. We are Catholic. Our whole lives are Catholic. And so we want, we want those realities. We want those mm -hmm. practices, those beautiful disciplines, those beautiful traditions that the church has developed over centuries. Why not just bring them into the home? Whatever is happening that day in the Mass, make it happen at home. You know, that's just one example. This is, we're talking with David Niles and Adam Minahan from the Catholic Man Show. These two men, I just have the, I don't know, there's something about them just that just stand out in my mind. I think about them often, and I'm so proud of what they're doing with their ministry, their, their radio show, and, and then, of course, their ministry to the Lord and to, and to their family. Where can they find you guys? CatholicManshow.com. And the name of the book we're talking about? We're talk it's a... Um Living liturgical, or I'm sorry, it is uh, it's, it's Living a, Beyond Sunday, Making Your Home a Holy Place. Brand new. It just came out. Just came out. Living Beyond <laughs> Sunday. And can they find it on Amazon, or where can they find that book? They can find it on EscensionPress.com. Oh, oh, so you just go with the big boys. You go right to Ascension uh, Press. That's awesome. Yeah, we, it's, a, yeah. it's so cool that Ascension Press did that with you guys. That's just, wow. You know, you don't yeah, take Ascension that lightly. Ascension Press was great. Yeah. They, yeah, Ascension Press, I want to give a shout out to them. They were so great to work yep. with. To so go to AscensionPress.com. Like 
This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with David Niles and Adam Minahan of the Council of Man and the Catholic Man Show. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. And today I want to talk to you about the virtue of moderation. I remember once surfing with my buddies at County Line in Ventura, California. Wally was there and Cap was there and we got it out of that freezing cold water, went up to Neptune's net, sat down, having some, some hot coffee to keep us warm. And one of the people said, you know what? The only thing you really need in life is new socks. And you know what? In the islands we don't wear socks, but on the mainland, a nice pair of new, like, white socks can be a real luxury. And from then on, that was really about the only luxury I had in my life. I'd always buy about a dozen new pair of socks about every couple months and just enjoy those socks. The next day we said, yep, that's all you really need in life. And we sat down, we said, it's a new pair of socks. And then someone said, you know what? You really need a bucket too, because you got to have something to butt your socks in. And then someone said, you know what? What you really, really need in life is you, you need a surfboard. Oh yeah, that goes without saying, you gotta have a surfboard. And then someone said, you know what, you need a wax for your surfboard. And then someone said, you need a real cool car with surf racks to put your surfboard on. And then someone said, you know, when it's flat, it's a good time to go sailing. What you really need is a sailboat. And so we had gone from this thing of being a minimalist and, and, uh, and a detachment to wanting more and more and more. We call it being acquisitive. The first lesson we need to learn in life is one of the first things we need to learn is detachment. Detachment from things, detachment from a need for power, detachment from a need for money, detachment from a need for glory. Learn to detach from all these things that we think might console us and learn to find our only consolation in intimacy with God. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak, deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, wa welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, I my publisher tells me I need to remind you about my two books that have just recently been republished by Sophia Institute. Uh, there's the newest one that just came out is called The Surfer's Guide to the Soul, and you know it's it's just such a cool book because I'm I'm using surfing as a metaphor uh, for the spiritual journey, but also it's really a, a memoir. Uh, of kind of a journey I've had in my own life. And I only tell the stories because I'm very transparent with it. And I think it allows other people to feel um, that they can be honest with themselves and with the Lord too about where they where they are and how, how things are going in their life. And it's kind of cool because I, I get I got interviewed by a nun the other day who she read my whole book. It's just so cool. But she but I, the, she saw it as something that could be used for Lectio Divina. You know, it was it was really meant to draw you into intimacy with God. And then my other book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue on the Seven Virtues. So both by so Sophia, so you can go to Amazon.com or DeepAdventure.com or to Sophia Publishing. I have two guys with me today who, uh, do you guys, have, Adam Minahan and David Niles uh, of the Catholic Man Show and, uh, and uh, the Council of Man. And David is wearing his Grateful Dad t-shirt. I love that. <laughs> and then you know what you know what you need to do then, Adam. You need to do you know that the band that fo that followed them up was called Fish, right? Y yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you need to have, and that's a very Christian symbol. You need to have the counterpoint to Grateful Dad. 
Yeah. Something yeah. with Ichthus. the fish. Uh, f- fisher a man. Ichthus. Yeah. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Isn't that uh, fish? Ichthus? I, I think know. you're I right. I think he's trying I could to be show wrong. off. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it's great to have you guys on the show. And we were, we've been talking about uh, the... And by the way, when you guys go out to, to, to eat uh, with your families, do you ever salute your children? Salute? Uh, In other I words, like know. this, like this. So you're sitting at dinner, you're sitting at breakfast, and the food comes, and they're digging into it, and the father does this. He puts his hand on his forehead. It's like he's <laughs> saluting, and he waits forever, and then finally they realize, oh, we're supposed to make the sign of the cross, and so his hand oh, just yeah. stays there forever. <laughs> have you guys ever found yourself doing that? I have not done that, <laughs> no, I, but I, I like it. Yeah, that's funny. It's pretty good. If my house, if my kids eat before we pray, they will get, they will get, uh, well, like in tr- in they'll trouble. get this, they'll get the look. But you know what happens me. to me is I'll go out with my wife. I, I'm she's so good at it. That I, re- I really don't have the it. I mean, we'll be sitting to ha- to, to to eat and. Um, I'll forget and I'll start eating and she'll just sit there and talk and and I'll notice after a while she's not eating. <laughs> she's just patiently like, oh, no. wait. Okay, we gotta pray. Yeah. Waiting for my husband to lead us in prayer. <laughs> and to, to be the <laughs> spiritual leader of our home. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so so then then we, we you went into a discussion about how you how you um create that environment in your in your home and then what was the next point that you were making in your book? I, I well, made Adam, you step back. Why don't you talk about language? Because I think Ooh. Uh, that, that's a, I think that's a, a part about the home that's often overlooked. Yeah, but so you know, we use these terms uh, when we're, you know, in your book, Barry, you talk about a, a lot of virtues, right? You're talking about the, the the four cardinal virtues, and so we realized while we're talking about in the home, like words have meanings, and by uh, saying these words, you should be sanctifying your language. So we should be utilizing and reinforcing the, these words to our children so that way they can use them and understand what they are. So when they are uh, doing something virtuous, we should use the, the actual words of, of virtue towards them so that way they mm. understand it and then they can uh, imply it. So, uh, son, that was very generous of you. Instead of just saying, oh, that was a good job, you know, good job, son. You right. use the words. The words have meaning. The words become the end goal. Right. You know, so then exactly. you're, then they mm-hmm. end up striving for virtues because they realize, oh, well, I know that, that was a prudent decision. Prudence right. is, is the mother virtue of all the cardinal virtues. I should be striving for that. You know, and so if you use the, the language in the home that we're striving to be, it becomes the end goal. And so you sanctify uh, the, the language within your home, thus hopefully uh, sanctifying your children. And also there's things you can do. I think that is that's like the key point. When you talk about the virtues, the virtues become the goal. But also it's little things like instead of saying, oh, we're going to go to church or we're going to even go to mass, mm-hmm. we're going to go to holy mass. We're going to pray the holy rosary. Of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, when you when you make My- sure to say that, then it, that like that's a there's a lesson there that, oh, we're not going to mass. We're going to holy mass because mass is it's holy. You don't have to tell mm-hmm. your kids mass is holy. They know when you say we're going to Holy Mass, obviously it's holy, right? Um, and so the mm. language that we use, and beyond that, there's like a liturgy at the table. The table is, mm-hmm. the dinner table is so unique. Um, I was just talking the other day to my wife. I, I don't know if the dinner table is a litmus test for how well like you've taught your children to behave away from the table and they bring those manners to the table, or if the mm. table is the... The table is the thing that teaches them to have good manners mm-hmm. away from the table. I don't know which. Maybe it's both. It goes both ways. But um, the way a child behaves at the dinner table is very indicative wow. of, mm-hmm. of the, virtue, the, the childhood virtues that they possess. Obviously, I, you shouldn't expect a five-year-old to possess courage to charge into battle. Okay, But there are certain things. Obedience is the first virtue that we should all learn. Um, and so there are there are virtues that they should know, and there's a liturgy at the table. Okay, just like in the just like in the mass, uh, we say certain things at certain times in a certain way with certain posture at the table. All of those rules apply. Okay, we ask politely for, you know, would you pass mm-hmm. this? Would mm-hmm. you please do this? You speak at certain times and not at others. You don't interrupt people, right? Mm-hmm. So there is the same liturgy that involves the language and the behavior um and that's just one example okay because it happens all the all in all of the time um another chapter we have in here is on the rooms themselves okay Mm -hmm. so the word sacred 
means to be set apart. A family is, is sacred because it's set apart from the rest of the world, okay? It's exclusive. Um, the household itself is exclusive. What's the first thing you notice about a house? It has walls. When you drive up, you notice, okay, these walls distinguish the inside of the house. And it's like basic stuff, but mm -hmm. when you think about it, it's profound. The inside of the house from the outside of the house, you know, all of a sudden there's an exclusivity when you're inside. Um, all of the different rooms, what do they mean? What's the role in the family? Um, the, we talk about it all in the book, from the bedroom to the living room. The living room's the best room because it's the only one ordered towards the person. Mm -hmm. It's not ordered towards a, a physical necessity. Every other room in the house serves a, a physical aspect of life, whether sleeping or eating, going to the bathroom, you know. Mm -hmm. right. But the living room is such that uh, it says that the person is good in and of themselves, so good that we built a room just to be with be with each other, right? And so, yeah, yeah. Um, the, all of the rooms teach a, a, a unique and really beautiful spiritual lesson about the, the domestic church. What are your thoughts, Adam? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. And this is, and we even talk about like how you actually implement this. So, like, uh, we have a, a spot in the in our living room that's actually also a prayer site, a prayer corner. What does this prayer altar look like? Like, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to implement this? Mm -hmm. Where do we read daily scripture? Where do we pray together as a family? There should be a, another spot within the home that is set aside from, it's set apart from everything else because this is where, this is the sacred part of our house. This is where we pray. This is where we approach our creator and we give him thanks and adoration. And so, um, and we even orient it towards the closest tabernacle that we can uh, in our ge geographic location. So, one of the really cool things, a good friend of yours, Bear, uh, Father Donald Calloway, he told I've me heard, one I've time. I've heard of him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I, love, uh, I love that guy. Yeah, he told me one time that we should, we should genuflect towards the closest tabernacle even when we're at our house. Because oh, that's so the Lord, cool. The Lord doesn't need, uh, you know, space doesn't mean distance, anything. Distance, right? What it, yeah. yeah. Distance, now, what is distance to Distance the Lord? doesn't mean anything. So he says, you know, you should still genuflect towards the tabernacle even when you're That's at your house. That's so cool. You know, actually, for yeah. me, the tabernacle is about 50 yards that way and 25, mm -hmm. and not even that far, and, and then 25 floors down. The Catholic Church is right next to me. So I'm, but I, 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 awesome. I tell people they need to have a, the men especially, they need to have a prayer chair or a place. So when the mm -hmm. kids get up early before, you know, you're the first one up and you're spending time with the Lord. Right. They see you sitting there. And I had a friend of mine, Tom Guthrie. Uh, he lived in Minnesota. I lived there for a few winters. That's what I like to say because I only remember the winter time. And I <laughs> went to visit him uh, after many, many years, over 30 years had gone by. He's still living in the, in the house that he lived in when I knew him. But his chair, his prayer, it's a prayer chair. And and it's 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 not a brand new chair anymore. It's ragged, and and so is his Bible. It's dog-eared, mm -hmm. and 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 the, the the wood on the on the armrest has kind of uh, been been you know sanded down by just his own his own arms. And you can tell that man's a man of prayer. And we need to have men especially need to have that that place where they carve out time and a have a place and a and a time where you pray. We're talking with Adam Minahan and David Niles of the Catholic Man Show and the Council of Man. How can they join the Council of Man? Yeah, if they go to, you can go to thecatholicmanshow.com and you can find it there, or you can go to patreon.com slash thecatholicmanshow. So cool. Um, this is the Bear Wozniak. I almost forgot who, who, I, who I am. This is the Bear Wozniak <laughs> Adventure. We get to come back and have one more segment with the Catholic Man Show and the, the Council of Man, David Niles and Adam Minahan. And we'll be right back. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus. You have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all 
at deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody to go to our website, deepadventure.com. You can join the Mama Bears uh, or, the, or the School of Manliness, the Man Cave. And if you do, a lot of good stuff happens. But one of the things you do is you get to have access to all of our Long Ride Home TV show. So you women are so effective in just happening to have the, ca- the, uh, the, the Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak t- motorcycle TV show playing when your brother-in-law comes over or the uncle that's fallen away from the church. It's happened so many times that they start, they get hooked on the, sh- on the motorcycles and these guys riding Harleys, and then pretty soon they find out this is talking about God, and they find out it's talking about Jesus. So if you go to our website, deepadventure.com, uh, you, not only do you have access to all of the, all 22 episodes that have been released through EWTN, but we have three more that are that are up there that have not even been viewed on EWTN yet. You get to see the director's cut before EWTN says, nah, we don't like that. It's it's not. It. I remember the first the first time we did a funny skit. You guys, I'm with I'm with David Niles and Adam Minahan. We had a, a funny sort of thing in our. We have a little funny skits in this in this uh, immersive reality show that we do sometimes. And and one of the guys at EWTN goes, you know, that's kind of funny. And I go, yeah, it's supposed to be. Fu-. And he goes, he goes, that's kind of funny. I look, yeah, we really don't do funny. <laughs> 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 like we have we have this this oh, series where we have oh. the we have these bounty hunters chasing us that they just pop up here and there in uh in the show and the the one that aired this last week on EWTN it's so funny cuz we're running we we go to confession cuz we've had a long ride home we've had a long ride and after 500 miles you got to go to confession <laughs> you know <laughs> but as we leave the bounty hunters are coming are, are we, we leave and we see the bounty hunters are, are out there trying to find us. So we hide for a while, and then they leave. And then we're, as we're leaving, this, this woman who is the assistant to Father Brian out there, Brian Wood, Woodward out there in, uh, in New Jersey, she's going in to go to confession. So we say, ma'am, if you see some, 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 uh, some, uh, some bounty hunters, tell them we went that way. So, you know, so we leave. And then sure enough, as she comes out of confession, one of the guys, ma'am, have you seen some bad looking bikers? And she looks up at the Lord and she looks down and she says, they went that way. She points them the wrong direction, right? So she just lied. So she turns around and goes back into confession. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next guy, just as she's coming out, and by the way, we have the clock ticking. You know how, you know how you're waiting, especially when the nuns are there. The the, the confession lasts forever. You know, with the underwear. Right. Uh, so we see the clock ticking with all, how long her confession is, and then and then she does it again when the when the when the sheriff comes by. But yeah, so we like to have a lot of fun. <laughs> so go to deepadventure.com. We love the mama bears. We love the guys who want to join the man cave in the school of manliness. You can do it there. We're talking with Adam Minahan and David Miles they were the inspiration for my man cave and so we're so grateful to them I mean what a great great idea uh, that you guys have tell tell us a little bit about what happens in in the council of man before we get back to to your to your book well in the council of man um, first of all where we will send you depending on uh, what level what level of support you send us we will we may send you one of our Glen Cairn glasses. Mm-hmm. These are, it, I have one of those. Logo. Yeah, yeah, you do. That's right. You've had one for a while. You have like one of the earlier ones. Um, the, I mean, they haven't changed. Right. But they're. It has our logo, laser etched with lasers. Mm-hmm. Dishwasher safe, because <laughs> uh, what? No, no man wants to hand wash a glass. No. Right? I mean, it's like I just swear shit with some whiskey and figure it's clean it's, call it good yeah. <laughs> right you can do that it can work like a coffee cup i mean who washes a coffee cup right you rinse it out it's fine you know yeah um but uh we also may uh there's a, a list of things uh, thank you gifts that we may send you uh, but uh we also will add you to our facebook group which mm-hmm. is where all things all things manly take place on the internet as we say if you're interested in the five ways we have a whole course 18 and a half hours with Carlo Broussard from Catholic Answers. I've heard of that rookie also. Yeah, exactly. I just, wrote to, I just wrote to him yesterday and I said, will you be on my show again? So he's going to be on my show in a few weeks. I love yeah, that. He's yeah. so awesome. Yeah, yeah he love, is. We, yeah, we love Carlo. He wrote, he, wrote uh, so a book, he wrote a book that you guys need to know about, Purgatory. I get to skip that, but you need to read that book. <laughs> <laughs> if I had as many brain cells as hairs that he doesn't have, I'd be a lot smarter. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> Uh, but we do. We we have a whole eighteen and a half hour course on going through like uh, each way of St. Thomas Aquinas, the, uh, the five ways, 
and he goes step by step. We also have another course on uh, fitness and virtue and nutrition. Oh, that's have, awesome! Uh, that's so cool. I yeah. keep wanting yeah. to do. I keep wanting to do that. Yeah, <laughs> he, it off yet. Uh, until, it, until it comes time to actually do it, do it. Like, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. You yeah. have someone else. Yeah, we did that with, with Pat Flynn, who's another great guy. Yes. If you don't know Pat Flynn, he'd be another yeah. great one. At, I, I, on the I show. need to have yeah. him on again. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then we also have uh, over over sixty audio like audio books or interviews uh, available to the cat to the guys. Yeah, you know uh, different of, encyclicals. Yeah, oh those things, those encyclical things. Hey, yeah. but but yeah. also you guys have um, you see a real need for honestly, men are isolated and lonely these days, and especially so many have fallen into uh, kind of a shameful type sin, and they don't know how to find their way out of it, and yeah. uh, and so. I always just tell my men, you know, we're all knuckle draggers. We're all bozos on the same bus. Everyone knows about, you know, you're not alone. Come here and join with us, and we can encourage you and 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 exhort you and uh, and and have hold my beer type moments together. Men need the and you know what we do is I, I forget if you guys do this, but we have a Zoom meeting with a whole group once a month, and then we have subgroups once a month where they break out. Are you guys doing Zoom meetups too? I forget. I do a, a we do a book club yeah so we do a book club together uh, on Zoom so we really a what a great together. idea yeah yeah, yeah so, so we do that so that way we can read you know, together and um, we just, just got we just got done with uh, Orthodoxy from G right, K Chesterton oh I was thinking about uh, that when you were talking earlier if you don't mind my jumping in yeah go ahead when you oh, guys yeah. talk about the structure it's a really a structure that you're building um, like Jesus built his church you know there's a structure to right. the church you're building a structure in your home a certain type of structure in unity with your wife she has to be totally you have to be both all in on it and that structure people might say might say well wow, that's super structured but as GK Chesterton said you know orthodoxy the walls of I think I'm not saying it quite right but the, the walls of orthodoxy let good things run wild and when you see that when you see that your home where you're sitting at breakfast table and there's order there and there's structure there it gives the children a comfort a sense of things being in order things aren't confused their minds their mind right. isn't rolling so that so i was i'm sorry i was going to say that earlier about gk saying it lets good things run wild what having a structure a like club. that yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, 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 we see that the, the children actually thrive in those situations, right? Mm -hmm. They thrive in being, being or, mm -hmm. like having order and routine to where uh, it, it gives them the opportunity to flourish, not only in the Christian life, but just, you know, in, in, in school and in making friends and everything else. And that's, you know, it's, what, isn't it an honor to be able to bring into existence a, some, some, a being that's going to live forever? Yeah, yeah, I, it is mind blowing. Pa Pamela is about to give uh, give birth number five. Yeah, with, with the Niles. we have number five coming in August or September. Do we know we'll if see. it's a boy or a girl? We don't. You know, one of my good friends uh, want, want, wanted to name his child after me. He, he said, as long as, as he said, as long as I change my name to Lilo, he would name his. <laughs> <laughs> his, named his little girl Lilo, but he said, "I want to name him after the child after you." I was like, "Wow, what an hour!" And he goes, "Yeah, but first you got to change your name to Lilo." But you don't know the name yet. Uh, well, if it's a boy, it's going to be Joseph. I was thinking Kevin. Yeah, Kevin would be strong. <laughs> yeah. It would be. Um, and if it's a girl, we don't know. We don't know. Okay, well that's interesting. You we may, maybe yet. maybe uh, maybe you all, you don't know yet though. You, are you waiting? We don't. We don't know. We're waiting to find out. Yeah, oh, that that's just so cool. So what? Give it. We got one more minute or so here. What would be your highlight? You would say, name us. Give us the name of the book again. Yeah, it's uh, 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 leaving, uh, living beyond Sunday, making your home a holy place. I think the highlight of the book, Bear, is the the last chapter. We talk about hospitality, mm. and I think that really ties a bow because the purpose of the household is not itself. We're not raising holy children to stay at home. Okay, we're raising holy children so that they can go out. Mm -hmm. And the diff um I mentioned earlier that the household is exclusive, mm -hmm. right? Your neighbors are not part of your household. It's very important to have that element, that understanding. Mm -hmm. And then But it's when all things are ordered well that then the household can reach out mm -hmm. and become a community. Mm -hmm. Hospitality is what turns islands of families into a community. And you need family you need the autonomy of the individual, the autonomy of the family. But you right. also need to have those points of integration. I, we were with Archbishop Chaput 
we were lucky to be there in Napa uh, a few years ago. And someone asked him, "Hey, what is it? What is the thinking? The very best program you can think of, or one of the new? What are the what? What, are, what really good program for evangelization?" And his answer was real simple: Get married, raise your children up in the Lord. That's the evangelization. It's, simple enough. <laughs> it's, this, it's this cutting edge thing is called marriage. Yeah. yeah. Right? Hey, you know, guys, we got to go. So tell me, where can they where can they find uh, David Niles and Adam Minahan? At the CatholicManshow dot com. CatholicManshow dot com, and they and there if you're there, and you, and their podcast is everywhere. Uh, one of the best things about them is first th- on the beginning of each of their shows, they review a manly beverage, sometimes a cigar. Uh, Till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, if you haven't been to the BearWoznikDeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books. And since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.